Hi everyone, welcome to ANA Backyard Gardening. Today we're going to show you how to make mead. So before we get to that though, I wanted to show you what I've done with my raised bed to keep Kona out of the garden. So today I wanted to plant all my vegetables for my winter garden, but I was a little nervous that as soon as I planted all these, Kona would show up and dig them all up again. So what I did is I put up a two foot fence around the raised bed, but I didn't wrap it all the way around. I left these gaps in between the posts so that hopefully I can come up to my garden, pull a post out and be able to work in the garden without too much trouble. So I'm hoping the idea of the fence deters Kona more over than the sturdiness of it because it is pretty easy to remove, but we'll see how it goes. In the meantime, I planted some romaine lettuce, some red and green cabbage, and cleaned out some of my tomatoes. I was just about to rip out my Roma tomato when I noticed that it is budding again. So it seems like once the yellow pear was gone, the cherry was dying off, this guy finally decided to explode with some new growth and maybe even some new tomatoes this late in the season, so we'll see. Hey everyone, it's Phil. Today we're going to make some mead, and uh, I just wanted to show how easy it actually is. And so, let's get started. Throw that so, in there. This we need our... We're going to need like a hose. Actually, I don't even know if we need the hose today, but... Go ahead and sanitize it anyways. Yeah, just for good measure in case. So you gotta like put it in. So that it... Oh, it's freaking hot. <laughs> and the key is here that they have to sit in the star sand for at least 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Something like that. I think it's only two minutes, especially with how hot it is. It's like 100 degrees. Uh, this little clamp for the hose. This uh, turkey baster. I should do it for now. It is so hot that I really hurt. I think that's all we need. I got this one. It's probably only got like a pound left in it. Actually, I'm gonna set it on its side so it can start moving towards the top. And we're gonna use up that one. We got another one of these. And about three pounds go into each batch. So we're gonna try and do three batches today. I got enough honey. I think we're gonna run out of water first. <laughs> And you're gonna need some distilled water. So I got the same thing. I've been doing some batches. So I just got a small assortment of distilled water, but I think we'll have enough for it. I'm gonna need some yeast. So I think it's still been a little hot by us. So I've been using this white Red Star Premier Blanc yeast. That's good up to 86 degrees before it'll die. So if we get a heat spell. We'll still be all right with that stuff. Some other time I want to do the white labs. Uh, sweet meat yeast. The WLP 720. Uh, but this one only goes up to like 70. It's a, yeah, it goes up to 78 before it dies. So I'm gonna save that for the winter. And we know it's gonna be cooler, not just pour nine bucks down the drain or however. So we keep a journal of all the home brews that we make. So Phil's looking back to some of the previous mead recipes that we've done to see what his notes were. But it's really convenient because as you go through the process, you have to make modifications sometime. And when you look back on the next home brew and you want to make this either the same modification or keep yourself from making the same mistake, then it's helpful to have a record of what you did. Are right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. So bring it on in. So we're just gonna put this on here. 
tear it out and start adding our honey. Uh, for my notes, last time I used 3.6 pounds, so I'm just going to go ahead and get it to that. It's about as fast as honey or something, but not as slow as molasses. So I'm trying not to touch the rim because I don't know what's on the bottle. We should be able to get most of that out. Look at that, it's pretty close. One pound. Down. Let it move a bit more. Look at that. Alright. The rest of this. You know, bring it up to like three point six. I think the recipe I'm using actually calls for 3.5, so I'll bring it to 3.5. Oops. Overshot. I think that's what I did last time. So I'm gonna write that one down. Okay, is it 9.30? Right. Start pouring in my water. Just bring it up to the top. What are you doing with the drill? So you gotta mix all this stuff. And I used to either shake it up or stir it, but then I found out you can use these paint stirrers. And you just shove it in there. Sanitize it first. That's the key. That's the key. And then you'll just mix it all up there. go for a couple minutes because if you incorporate oxygen into there then the yeast will be happier and it'll ferment quicker. So I'm gonna just go for a couple minutes. That's one down. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cover it up real quick and then I'm gonna put yeast in all of them at the same time right at the end. So I'm going to cover this one up, put it on the side, and I'm going to put a note on it that is number one. So that's one down. So we're going to go quickly through the next two that we're doing and then show you how to add the yeast at the end. So we've made two meads previously, 
We flavored one as a strawberry mead and one as an orange mead. So to keep our record straight, we're doing three, four, and five. And next we're going to show you guys how to add the yeast to these mixtures. Mm -hmm. It's so hot. Alright, so then we're gonna get a, just a little Pyrex cup, get that started in the sterilizer. It should just only take a couple minutes. And then we're gonna get our yeast down. And I'm gonna read the packet because I always forget. I just wanna point out here. We took Kona to training. <laughs> so even though we say things like Kona destroyed the garden or Kona's not behaving, we've done training with him. He's just very stubborn. I'm also get this floating thermometer in the sterilizer. Why do you need the thermometer? Uh, to activate the yeast, you have to get this water to like the perfect temperature, so we're gonna measure that and make sure that it's all good to go. Alrighty, so we're gonna put in about a third of a cup and get this in our handy dandy microwave. We're at 160. Damn. Get the ice pack under Okay, we'll give that a minute to cool down. So what is this? This is a refractometer that does the same thing as your, uh, what do you call that thing, hydrometer? The hydrometer, yeah. Uh, except you'll need like a drop or two of your, your sample instead of a whole test tube, which will really help because we're only doing one gallon batches. I wonder. I think you can see it. You're just gonna need a really bright light. Like put it in here. The, the levels of potential alcohol content. Sorry, Dryden. I moved no, it. Shows it. you the sugar content. The sugar content, the specific gravity. With respect to water. Once you know oh, what it. There is. it is. Okay, so really hard to see. But what will happen is that a blue line will creep up this once you actually put a sample in it. And then that way we can read the specific gravity of the sample pretty easily. Kona, you want a cookie? Woof. Woof. Woof, woof. Woof, woof, Kona. Woof. Woof. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. Good boy. <laughs> so we're at about 101, and I bet you by the time I get the stuff in there, that will be at just the perfect temperature. So, like I said, we're using this Red Star Premier Blanc white wine yeast that wants to be at 95 to 100 degrees. And it says one of these will do five gallons, but I've always done, because I don't like doing the math for like weighing them out by grams, I just do a half of one per gallon. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a full one of these in there. I can open it. It's like plastic. I'm gonna throw one of these in here. Actually, I should be able to just do that, right? Because it does five gallons. Correct. So I'll just throw one of those in there. So it's been about 20 minutes. And I ended up putting like a drop or two of honey in there and we're starting to get bubbles that form on their own from the yeast. So I think we're ready to put that into our batches. I'm gonna try and dole it out as best as I can into thirds. So, so I'll start with number three. Like that. <laughs> you can see it. Oh, really? Just dispersing. I can't get it on the camera, but you could definitely tell. Huh. And number four. I probably infected it. Like that. Oh yeah, you can see it. That's really cool. And number five. They shouldn't need a mix or anything. So I'm gonna do our first one. Third one. Batch number three. First test, but batch number three. Just need a couple drops. Put that on here. charts. What's it reading? 1.35-ish. Do you want to take a look? That's way up there. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can grab it on the camera. Yeah, no you works. can see that pretty well. So it is almost off the charts, which is pretty cool. Maybe we can convert the scale on the left to uh, SG. It's at, so each one of those is one, two. So it's at about 30.9 bricks. So we'll see what that converts over into. Okay. Last step here is to fill this airlock up with a little bit of sanitizer. Right there. And there's a line on the airlock that indicates how high the water ought to be, yeah? Yep. Fill that up. Pop it in here. Nice and sanitized. And let it go. And that's it. We're going to put airlocks on the rest of the batches here and set it in a cool, dark place for what, about a week? About a week or two, yeah. So we'll check the specific gravity as we get closer to a week or two weeks, see if it reaches our target specific gravity, and that'll tell us how much alcohol content there will be. But otherwise, we'll go into a secondary fermentation after that and that will be the flavor of the mead. So it could be anything from like a strawberry mead to blueberry, or we've done orange in the past, or cinnamon even. There's a wide range of options. But we'll give you an update once these are ready, and hopefully this really helped you to understand how easy 
making your own batch of me can really be. So hit the like and subscribe buttons below and we'll see you guys in the next video.